As mentioned in the previous video, we are going to create a new media query for this particular screen size. And at this width, we are going to hide the navigation menu and only reveal it when the user clicks on the menu icon, which we are going to also display in this position uh, at this uh, screen width. So let us go to our CSS file and scroll down to the section where we defined the previous media query. I'm just going to duplicate that existing media query and make sure I change the value to 756 and leave it empty for now. Like before, I'm also going to copy all the header styles and I will paste it within that media query. Then I scroll to the top and I start modifying them one after the other. First of all, the header is going to remain essentially the same, so I will remove the style for that. The menu icon, which we were not displaying at all, we will now make sure it is being displayed. And since the font style remains the same, or rather the font size remains the same, I'm going to remove that. The nav is going to remain empty for now. We are going to fill it up with some styles later on. We are not going to make any changes to unordered lists within the header. And then as for the nav menu, the nav menu is actually what we want to hide. But before we hide it, let's reload the page and see how it looks. Okay, so our menu icon is displaying alongside the other uh, two sub items in the header. If you take a look at the HTML, you will notice these elements include the menu icon, the logo, and the nav element. Notice that the other element, the third item within the header, is not the nav menu, but rather the nav element. And what we are hiding is the nav menu itself. We are doing this so that on smaller screen sizes, we will be able to display the search icon and the search bar. So the only thing that we will reveal when we click on the menu icon is the, the nav menu itself. Because as for the search icon and the search box, they are going to remain on the header on smaller devices. So just to illustrate what I mean by that, if you go to very small screens, you will notice that the, the search box and the search icon, they remain on the small nav bar. Okay, so we will go to the CSS for that nav menu and do display none. When we do that and we refresh, it disappears and we automatically have our three elements arrange themselves in this order. And because we gave a, a justify content of space between to the header element, now its child elements are aligning themselves accordingly with space between them. Now what we want is that when the user clicks on the menu icon, we want that nav menu to reveal or to slide in from this left from the left corner of the screen. So there's going to be an animation. And in case you don't know already, uh, it is not possible to animate the display property on an element using CSS. So we are going to remove this display property of none and make sure we use positioning instead. We use positioning, we give it a fixed position and a fixed position simply means we should place that element in relation to the entire screen itself. So it should be fixed in relation to the entire screen. So if we give it now, if we use the left and the top properties, we can place it exactly where we want it to be. So if we do left zero and top zero, the nav menu our element is going to start from the top left of the entire screen and not just the header. So now the parent component that we are placing that nav menu in relation to is no longer the component that immediately houses it. 
it now becomes the entire page itself so left of zero and top of zero is actually left and top of the page itself and that's why the element when we reload is 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 now starting at the top left corner so we were displaying the elements within the nav menu using flex and we were giving it a flex direction of rule if not explicitly uh, by default so we wanted to display the elements to be displayed from top to bottom as we see in the finished project instead of horizontally so we are just going to change the flex direction to column And then we make sure we give it a height of 100% and then we give it a width of 250 pixels. We give it a background color of white and an overflow in the Y direction of scroll. This simply says that if at any point we have too many items within the uh, nav menu on the mobile, then the user should be able to scroll through them and click the ones that are found right under. Okay. Uh, the next thing we want to do is we we'll give it a Z index of a very big number. You can pick any number, but just, just make sure it's very big. That way we want that when the nav menu is open, it becomes the topmost element on the page so that you can access it without being uh, interrupted by other elements on the page. And lastly, we want to give a bit of padding at the top. First of all, let me refresh and let's see what I'm talking about. Okay, so the first element is found a little bit uh, very high at the top. So I want to give a top margin of 50 pixels and then left and right, we'll just give it zero. Okay, so the first element starts somewhere down here and that's that looks better. Now these are uh, elements, these link elements in the nav bar have too much space in them, which was fine on the desktop, but on mobile we want to reduce the padding. So I will scroll. Uh, for now this is all the styles you need to do on the nav menu. Now for all list or rather for all link items within the nav menu, display is still going to be blocked, so we'll take that out. Text decoration will remain known. The color will remain the same. The padding top and bottom are a bit too big, so I'm going to remove that. And then we'll give it a padding all round of 16 pixels. Okay, we refresh and now it looks better. So the next thing I want to do is I want us to see how the drop down is going to look on mobile. Because if you click on it right now, it is still going to be showing the styles we got from the desktop design so for the mobile we want it to just slide down and reveal all the drop down elements instead of being uh, popping up as a kind of tooltip like we have on the desktop uh, design okay so let us fix this we go back to our styles we are not going to be hovering so I'm going to remove the styles for the link hover. The nav icons are going to remain pretty much the same. And now, uh, the nav item itself, we are going to get back, to come back to this. Let me just indicate here that to be styled because uh, it's very easy to forget. So from the top down to this point, we have already styled. So uh, the next thing is a drop down. Okay. Now the width we are going to inherit the width from the the parent itself, which is uh, the nav menu. So the drop down is going to have the same width as the nav menu, since it is inside the nav menu. For the position, we will give it a position of static. Now the difference here with a position of absolute is that. We are basically unsetting the absolute positioning. Remember, we gave its parent a position of relative and then the drop down on inside it a position of absolute so that we can use the top and the left uh, 
properties to place them in relation to that parent but now we no longer need these so we have to unset the static the or rather absolute positioning so elements by default usually have the static positioning so if we give it a position of static we are basically making it to behave like a normal element or or the way it is normally supposed to behave the background color it's going to inherit a background color from the parent which is white the border radius we don't need a border radius on on uh, mobile no box shadow either so i'm going to take all these out then i'll leave just one of them which i'll assign a box shadow value of none now we are not going to hide it um so i'm give it i'll give it a an opacity of one so in this case we are not really in this case in the case of mobile it is not really hiding that we are hiding instead we are just giving it a height of zero initially and then when the user clicks we increase the, the maximum height so that's what we are doing so there's nothing like opacity or hiding or anything like that so by default it should be visible only it should have a height of zero a maximum height of zero let me just give that now of zero so the z index should be one it is just going to inherit or since it is already on this element the nav menu that has a high z index we are setting the z index to one so that it should be uh, on the same level as elements on that parent component instead of the negative z index that we are giving on our uh, default on the desktop so initially on the desktop we had to move the drop down down a bit so that we could animate it upwards that's why we gave it this transform or translate y of 35 pixels we are going to set this back to the normal uh, translate y of 0 pixel which basically means we should leave it in its current position we shouldn't move it around so let us go back to our browser and we refresh this okay um, because we gave it a height of zero we see that it is still being displayed but it is um it is still being displayed in that position but this is all the drop down it items are appearing as an overflow since the height is zero but if i put a maximum height of 200 pixels this is maximum height not really yeah when we put a maximum height you're going to see that it's going to uh, place itself well uh, as it as an a sub element of the drop down element and then we want to give these drop down elements a a padding left to make them uh kind of indent to the right a bit and to indicate that they are under this particular nav item as for the maximum height we are going to set it we are going to set it when we are doing the actual animation so we'll comment that out for now or we'll leave it here for now so that we can see the elements as we style them so as for the links we want to do a little indentation i'm just going to copy this one up here and then we'll give it a padding left of let's say 32 pixels and we refresh and something is certainly wrong somewhere oh and that's because i only copied i only copied so it is still being overridden here so i'm going to take this out so that the one we have assigned up here should apply and it does apply so this is how our drop down is going to look on mobile when you expand it and then you open this particular drop down item and now let us clean up our, our the styles we have inside our, our media query so we have styled from the top right down to this particular point so these other styles they are going to remain as they are or um yeah they are going to basically remain as they are unless when we are doing the animation the next video if we realize anything that needs to change with them we are going to change them 
for the nav item itself it's going to remain like this so i'm going to take these tiles out i was going to give it a flex direction of column i was going to give it a flex direction of column but i don't think it is necessary because the elements within it are going to naturally display oops naturally display in column star since we removed or uh, we gave it a position of static and the drop down itself is an unordered list actually just to be safe we are going to give it a position a flex direction of column if you take a look at the uh, yeah let's just give it a flex direction of column so that we have two items under it the unordered list and the link um I'm even surprised that it's not displaying in the row direction where we have the uh, the link to the right and then the nav or the drop down the link to the left and the drop down to the right so we'll give it a flex direction of column so that it displays the link first and then the uh, drop, drop down under it okay uh, for now we are going to use this later on but let's leave it empty for now okay so see you in the next video where we do the animation and uh, and the dark overlay that you see here